I'm Michael Weber, Artistic Director of Chicago's Porchlight Music Theater. Opening October 9, 1947, at Broadway's New Century Theater, High Button Shoes, with music by Julie Stein, lyrics by Sammy Kahn, and a book by Stephen Longstreet, based on his novel The Sisters Like Them Handsome, was a return to straight-up musical comedy on the Broadway stage. In an era dominated by the dramatic, well-made musical plays of Rodgers and Hammerstein, Lerner and Lowe, and Kurt Weill, High Button Shoes dared to take audiences back to the nostalgic and innocent days of the early 1900s and provide an evening of toe-tapping and easily accessible songs combined with plentiful and hearty laughs provided by top clowns like Phil Silvers, Nanette Fabre, and Joey Fay. Many involved with High Button Shoes were Broadway first-timers, or relatively unknown, except for the director, George Abbott, and choreographer, Jerome Robbins. The creative team, composer Julie Stein, lyricist Sammy Kahn, and writer Stephen Longstreet, had worked in Hollywood, as had the show's producers. And actor Phil Silvers, who got his start in burlesque before going to Hollywood, was best known for his on-screen conman persona, which he also utilized in his one and only previous Broadway appearance, the musical Yokel Boy, almost ten years prior. This collision of veteran and novice Broadway musical artists created a challenging environment. Rumors circulated that the book by Longstreet was, quote, hopeless, and that Abbott and Silvers were heavily rewriting it. The Schuberts, involved because the show was to play in one of their theaters, even approved an increase in Abbott's salary percentage to include author's royalties. Even with all this, on opening night, audiences loved the show, and it outlasted the season's noteworthy productions including Brigadoon, Street Scene, Finian's Rainbow, and even Rodgers and Hammerstein's highly anticipated Allegro. One of the highlights of the original production was an extensive ensemble dance number called The Bathing Beauty Ballet, set to the song On a Sunday by the Sea at the beginning of the second act. Jerome Robbins staged this number in the manner of a Max Sennett slapstick film, with a major evocation of the period in a tribute to silent movie comedy. Amanda Vale, in her biography of Robbins, describes this dance number. The actors careen across the stage, in and out of a row of boardwalk bathhouses, slamming doors, falling, rolling, leaping to their feet, colliding with one another, in a masterpiece of intricately plotted chaos that bears all the marks of the developing Robbins style. Wit, character, drama, and precision. You'll enjoy the song in this program, even while this radio version obviously can't provide you with the experience of the famous dance, but that's why these radio shows make it so fun to use our imaginations, right? Here on the May 7th, 1951 episode of The Railroad Hour are Margaret Whiting as Sarah Longstreet, Gordon McRae as Henry Longstreet, and Jim Backus as Harrison Floy in... High button shoes. Started show train. Tonight, the Association of American Railroads presents the nostalgic Broadway musical High Button Shoes, starring Gordon McRae and his guest star, Margaret Whiting. Our choir is under the direction of Norman Luboff, and our music is prepared and conducted by Carmen Dragon. Yes, tonight another great musical success is brought to you by the American Railroads, the same railroads that bring you most of the food you eat, the clothes you wear, the fuel you burn, and all the other things you use in your daily life. And now, here is our star, Gordon McRae. Miller, and good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Well, sir, tonight, a lovely memory of the days of hobbled skirts and mandolins and high-button shoes. Margaret Whiting is Mama Longstreet, and I'm the fortunate Papa Longstreet in one of the most charming musicals. And here's high-button shoes. <laughs> Yes, 
Yes, dear? Listen to what they're playing on the radio. That wonderful old polka we used to dance to way back in 1913. You know, I guess they're bringing back all the old songs, Mama. Papa, dance with me. Oh, now, Sarah, you know I've got two left feet. Oh, you're a good dancer, Papa. You know that. Now, please, just once around the living room for old time's sake. I'd, I'd fall apart. Oh, please, Papa. Papa, won't you dance with me? Oh, dance with me. Please dance with me. Papa, take a chance with me and dance with me tonight. And when you whirl me round and round, we'll go right off the ground. We'll go around and round. We'll go. And when we hear the trombone sliding high, we'll both be gliding high up to the sky. I love the polka pie. Why won't you dance with me? Oh, dance with me. Please dance with me. When you hold me, hold me tight. Oh, Papa, won't you dance with me? Maybe a few hobbles, Mama. Ah, uh, that's my old fella. <laughs> You're as light as a feather, Mama. But you know, I remember this more as a waltz. Way back there in 1913. Yes, it was a sort of a waltz. And I remember you had a white dress that rustled as we danced, Sarah. And you were the most beautiful girl in New Brunswick, New Jersey. And I remember how you took me out in the veranda of the dance pavilion. You sang to me, Henry, the loveliest song. It made me cry. You know something, Sarah? If if I weren't in training, I'd I'd kiss you. I know, Henry, but wouldn't you break training for me? Well, Rutgers expects every man to do his duty. Yes, but only on the football field. Oh, excuse me, Miss Sarah. Hope I'm not breaking anything up. <laughs> oh, good evening, Mr. Floyd. You know Henry Longstreet, Mr. Harrison Floyd? Oh, to be sure, to be sure. Hi. Uh, just thought I'd check with you about our date tomorrow, Miss Sarah, our little uh, jaunt to the country. <laughs> date? Yes, it's going to be a combination picnic and real estate sale. And what real estate are you selling? Uh, that acreage that Miss Sarah spoke on way out at the end of town. A little salesmanship and we'll get rid of that swamp. I mean, that lovely tract in no time. <laughs> oh, how sweet of you to help my father, Mr. Floyd. Anything for a beautiful, beautiful lady. Ta-ta. 
See you tomorrow. <laughs> you didn't tell me you were going on a picnic with that con man. Well, he's a very nice gentleman, and besides, you're in training. But, Sarah, we get Sundays off. Why, I could even kiss you tomorrow. Right smack on the picnic. Well, then come on along, Henry. <laughs> It'll be good for you. <laughs> Just everybody in New Brunswick is buying the property. I don't know, honey. I, I don't trust that Floy guy. But I'm collecting all the money right here in this little black bag. Mr. Floy appointed me treasurer of the new development. Well, I just don't like all these developments developing so fast. Oh, excuse me, little lady. If you'll just hand me that little black bag, we'll <laughs> count up our receipts. Well, certainly, Mr. Floy. Uh, I'll be right back. Ta-ta. You shouldn't have done that, Sarah. Why, Henry Longstreet, Mr. Floyd is honest as the day is long. Well, I have a feeling that this is one of the shortest days in the year. <laughs> Hold everything. This whole deal is a big swindle. Swindle? I just walked down to where I was going to build my house, and I fell in. <laughs> You're the treasurer, young lady. Now, where's our money? Mr. Floyd's counting it. Well, counting it nothing. I just saw him heading out of town. Which way? In the direction of Atlantic City. Well, let's go. We got to catch that big crook. <laughs> You remember that day, Mama? Oh, I don't think I'll ever forget it, Papa. But you know, even if he was a crook, I was kind of like Harrison. Harrison? Since when do you call him by his first name? Papa, that was 38 years ago. Well, I don't like you calling him by his first name. Well, Papa, you're jealous. Yes, Mama. I guess I am. Time has treated our love kindly. For I still adore you blindly There can never be another love for me I still get jealous when they look at you It's more than I can bear when they start to stare. Yes, they think you're too good to be true. I still get jealous when we kiss Oh, 
get jealous Cause it pleases you Our flame should have died out gently Still it's burning not just mentally There can never be another Remember the time you winked at a guy and I got the punch in the eye? I may not show it, but I do. Why can't you flirt with the guys that are small instead of the guys that are tall? It's worse than I can bear. Inside? When they start to stare. My pride. Guess they think you're too good to be A man true. that marries the homelier kind settles for peace of mind. I'm jealous when we kiss Good night. Your kisses are sweet. I like them a lot. They're worth all the troubles I've got. Unless you hold me extra tight. I'm as jealous as can be. I wish you would flirt with me. And dear, I know a secret you We'll return for the second act of High Button Shoes in just a moment. When you watch a freight train go by, made up of cars from many different railroads, all put together in one train, you are seeing America's primary transportation at work. Those cars may have come from anywhere in the country. They may be going anywhere on the continent. But wherever they started from and wherever they are going, any one of them can be moved over the tracks and in the trains of any railroad. That's one familiar feature of the amazingly flexible network of America's basic transportation system. And here's another. It is a system which is accustomed to meeting emergencies and doing so with its own resources. It is organized to make prompt repairs when there is any break in service. And while repairs are being made, to use alternative rail routes around the location of breaks caused by floods, washouts, landslides, or other troubles. And this readiness extends to damage from enemy bombs, if such a thing should ever come to pass in this country, as well as to damage from the forces of nature. This ability of railroads to keep running despite great damage was clearly demonstrated during the war in both Great Britain and Germany. And here's still another thing to remember about railroads and emergency. The fact that railroad trains are moved under organized control, not as part of a movement on highways, which might be choked with a rush of vehicles individually operated and largely uncontrollable. These railroads are America's prime dependence for the overwhelming bulk of all its intercity transportation. They carry almost twice as many ton miles of intercity freight traffic as all other transportation agencies combined, and nearly six times as much as is carried by all motor trucks in intercity service. Each one of us has a stake in the health and strength and the continued readiness of these essential railroads to meet national needs. For valuable and useful as other kinds of transportation are, the continued operation of them all depends upon the continued service of America's number one transportation, the American railroads. <laughs> Act Two of High Button Shoes, starring Gordon McRae as Henry Longstreet and Margaret Whiting as Sarah. That's funny, isn't it, Sarah? How a tune and one turn around the living room with you in my arms brings back all the old days. Well, how did we used to dance this, Papa? Well, a little farther apart. And you had to be energetic to do it in this tempo. 
Remember, we always thought it up to a waltz. Mm, that's nicer. I love you, Papa. I love you, Mama. To me, Papa, you were always Rudolph Valentino and Milton Sills and Raymond Navarro, all rolled into one. Oh, Mama. And in my dreams, you used to climb into my window with a knife in your teeth. And we dance a wild tango together. Mama, slow up. Hey, Peter Bell. I haven't felt this out of breath since that day we we chased Mr. Harris and Floyd all over Atlantic City. Do you remember, Mama? Nobody will ever forget that Sunday when Mr. Floyd ran off with a little black bag full of our money. That chase was like a two-reel silent movie. On a Sunday by the sea, oh, you should have seen us, me and me. Swimming, splashing, isn't it great? And the food tastes so much better because it's covered with sand. There's Floyd. Get him. He went into the bathhouse. Oh, he's out of the bathhouse. He's underneath the bathhouse. He's on top of the bathhouse. I got him. No, no. Police officer, here's your man. Don't let me go. Harrison Floyd. The international con. All right, come along oh, quietly now. Why, arrest me and I'll never buy another ticket to policeman's ball. <laughs> now, just a minute, officer. Floyd, where's all the money? Where's that little black bag? I haven't the remotest idea what you're talking about. Now, all right, officer, you drag me to prison. But remember, this will cost you your pension. Henry, <laughs> what are we going to do? My father and I will have to make good every cent of this swindle. Oh, now, don't worry, honey. Everything will work out. Oh, how could I be so deceived about that, that con man? Well, everybody makes mistakes, honey. He offered you the glamour and excitement of a big city life. And all I can offer is small town excitement and a lot of plain old-fashioned love. That is, if you can see yourself in love with me. Can't you just see yourself in a given
you just see yourself on the porch with me Watching a show the stars give for free about getting out of Rutgers? By a strange coincidence, this is the day that Harrison Foy graduates from the New Jersey State Penitentiary. You're both getting out at the same time. Greetings, everybody. Floyd. Well, you certainly got a lot of nerve coming here. My commencement was earlier than yours. Oh, kids, I, I brought you a present. Why, Mr. Floyd, the little black bag. Where was it? Buried in the property. I had to wait for low tide to dig it up. Oh. Hope you don't mind a few wet hundred-dollar bills. Don't tell me you're going straight. I tell you, my boy, an honest heart beats beneath the celluloid shirt front. And to prove it to you, I'm going to give you two a chance to double the money in this little black bag. Oh, really, Mr. Floyd? I happen to be in on the ground floor of one of the longest established O-line gold brick manufacturing companies in the Western Hemisphere. Charlatan and Sons. Gold bricks. Gee, that sounds like a wonderful investment. Now, 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 wait a minute, Sarah. Hold it, Floyd. We don't want anything to do with your crooked schemes. Sarah and I have an appointment with the Justice of the Peace. So you get moving, Floyd. All right. I know when I'm not wanted. Well, that leaves me with nothing to do but hook up my high-button shoes and hit the road. Remember that, Mama? Oh, uh, how could I ever forget, Papa? Well, I forgot how wonderfully you danced, Mama. 1913. Those were the good old days. These are the good new days, Mama. You mind my saying I think you're still the prettiest girl in New Brunswick? Papa. I might even be persuaded to say that you're the prettiest girl in New Jersey. And the best part of it is that you're my girl. Ladies and gentlemen, Margaret Whiting will return in just a moment. And our thanks to Jim Backus, who is Harrison Floy, and to all the members of our company. High Button Shoes with music and lyrics by Sammy Kahn and Julie Stein, and book by Stephen Longstreet, was dramatized for the Railroad Hour by Lawrence and Lee. The Railroad Hour is brought to you each week at this time by the American Railroads. And now, a word from Marvin Miller. Thank you, Gordon. To date, thousands of our listeners have requested their free copy of the attractive new 32-page Railroad Hour booklet. What's more, many have written to tell how highly they value this souvenir with its fascinating pictures and life stories of our stars and cast. If you haven't yet done so, 
Write tonight for your free copy. The address is The Railroad Hour, Transportation Building, Washington 6, D.C. That's The Railroad Hour, Transportation Building, Washington 6, D.C. And now here are Gordon McRae and Margaret Whiting. Wasn't it fun going back to the good old days? Well, I don't know if they were so good, Maggie. Do you realize that in 1913 there was no radio, no talking pictures? Why, they didn't even have television. What do you suppose people did with their time back then? Well, there was nothing to do but sit in the back porch swing with your girl and... <laughs> back porch swing with your girl. No, I... <laughs> well, maybe those good old days weren't so bad after all, Maggie. Well, who are you singing love songs to next week, Gordon? Mimi Benzel will be our guest for Sigmund Romberg's Nina Rosa. Well, I'll cat whisker you on my crystal set. <laughs> good night, Maggie. You were wonderful. Good night. All aboard. Well, sir, it looks as though we're ready to pull out. And so until next week, this is Gordon McRae saying goodbye. <laughs> McRae can currently be seen starring in Warner Brothers' West Point story. Margaret Whiting can be heard on the Tide Show. Our choir is under the direction of Norman Luboff, and our music is prepared and conducted by Carmen Dragon. Until next week, this is Marvin Miller saying goodbye for the American Railroad. While she only appeared in one Broadway show, the Johnny Mercer tribute review Dream, in 1997, Margaret Whiting was one of the great interpreters of American popular song and an award-winning radio, television, cabaret, and regional theater star. She made over 500 records, 60 albums, and had 12 million sellers, in her words. Jim Backus was one of the few actors to do it all. Broadway, radio, movies, television, and even cartoons. He was typecast in roles as rich type gentlemen, but broke the mold when he played James Dean's father in the film classic Rebel Without a Cause. As one of the most in-demand character actors in Hollywood, Backus also tackled two roles that he would eventually be best known for the myopic Mr. Magoo, and the super-rich Thurston Howell III in TV's Gilligan's Island. Following High Button Shoe's opening, Sammy Kahn, eager to return to Hollywood, did just that, and created some of the best-loved music in film history before returning to Broadway in the 1960s with the shows Skyscraper and Walking Happy, and eventually reuniting with Julie Stein in 1970 for Look to the Lilies, a stage musical version of the book Lilies of the Field. Julie Stein, however, had determined that Broadway was the place for him. If High Button Shoes was a long-running financial success, Stein's next musical, Gentlemen for Fur Blondes, was an even longer-running hit that demonstrated that he could write musical comedy songs as well as anybody then practicing the art. Theaters across the country need your support now, more than ever. We hope you'll consider a donation to Porchlight Music Theater today. Just go to porchlightmusictheater.org. Until next time on Classic Musicals from the Golden Age of Radio, I'm Michael Weber.